Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to A Mexican Crossing Lines with your hosts, Cindy Gomez Shep. And Duke Gomez Shep. You're listening to 88.1 FM, KPPPLP Fargo Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. And tonight, I will be talking about driving factors, or as some might call them, push factors. These are things that we have talked about in conjunction with the caravan. But as long as I have been reporting about the activists, politicians, media people, veterans, medics, what have you from these different variety of groups having to do with Standing Rock and after at different pipeline constructions and camps, at different natural disasters, Everyone's main question has been, why? Cindy, why? What's driving this phenomenon that's happening? Why? Why are they at Standing Rock? Why did they go there, Cindy? Why did they put an innocent woman in jail? Why did they uh, frame Kathleen Bennett? Why did they leave her mother in a hospital to die? Why do these people do these things, Cindy? Can you explain it? Why was Jill Stein there, Cindy? Why? Why is the caravan happening? Everybody wants to know what is the driving force? What is the driving factors? And I'm going to tell you about what those driving factors are tonight. And they're not simple organic things like you may think especially with regard to the caravan yesterday i shared an article with you by guadalupe correa cabrera a professor an expert in this area from george mason university she wrote an article together with one of the uh, most important human rights activists in terms of migration in mexico el padre uh, Salis, oh, I was, I was Solalinde. I was trying to mix up his name with another priest's name. Mm-hmm. Um, Solalinde. And together, they wrote an article titled that the caravan mass migration is not an organic thing. It's not organic. And um They tried to tell us that what happened at Standing Rock was all natural, all organic. People just naturally wanted to come to this thing here in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. And if you've lived here in North Dakota and the size of the state that we live in, you would know there's something very, very strange going on when tens of thousands of people are coming to North Dakota. Yep. Because it's never happened before. (laughs) Probably will never happen again. It's not a destination. It's not a destination. Folks, there are drivers, but they are... Whether it's the campaigns, these mass protests, these clashes uh, between Antifa and and, uh, white supremacists and all of these other things that I have talked about on my show, now connected to the caravan, they have uh, been moved by activists, media allies, and moneyed politicians and... um, their their issues their agendas that are moving all of these things <clears throat> it's the dog wagging the tail i'm going to talk to you about some of those things connected to what we were finishing on uh the last show which was uh how these um activists connected to the caravan support network we're involved in the Venezuela embassy protest. I'm going to bring you some updates about that. Some people got arrested today. <laughs> we'll talk about all of that and other forces at work with regard to the Venezuelan embassy. I'm going to tell you who they are, how they are connected, including the Answer Coalition and Black Alliance for Peace, how those are connected to the politicians Jesse Jackson and Ajamu Baraka. We're going to talk about the group that all of these border support network people 
continue to talk about no more deaths. I showed you a post from their page yesterday where they were talking about Scott Warren and no more deaths and al otro lado, you know, all of these organizations that they support, that they back. We'll, we'll delve into no more deaths a little bit more today. And we'll also talk about who is promoting within the media. In, in, in fact, uh, we've been uh, highlighting or uh, spotlighting some of those publications that frequently have been writing in a very positive light about people that we know are being investigated for human smuggling and trafficking, for aiding and abetting people in committing crimes. And I'm going to show you that that includes media people, both in Mexico, from Honduras, and in the United States, like The Intercept, Ryan Devereaux, and all of the nice articles he's been writing about No More Deaths, Al Otro Lado, and all of these people, all of these groups that I've been talking to you about, the people that are in the leaked list <clears throat> that are being investigated by Homeland Security, FBI, CBP, Interpol, and others. We're going to talk about um, not only that, but, you know, we talked about the San Diego Union Tribune, how they have been writing a lot about these folks, also in a very favorable light. And we'll talk about another guy that you might not have had in your wheelhouse, Milton Benitez, El Perro Amarillo, which was heavily promoted by the Bear, uh, Caravan Sport Network folks and leadership, and how he had an interview with one of these uh, caravan escorts or coyotes, you can call them either one. Mm -hmm. Ulises Ortiz, the guy that I showed you was with the uh, activist Jesse Sandoval, both of whom were lying constantly about the conditions that were at the shelters offered by the Mexican government so that they could control the caravan goers and keep them sleeping in the streets in raw sewage. And we're going to talk about some of the movers and shakers way at the top, who I believe are the real drivers behind these campaigns, political or uh, the kind that are seeking to threaten the sovereignty of both Mexico and the United States, like these mass migrations orchestrated by people like K. Kurimoto. We'll look at what they've been talking about of late and how they are promoting the camps in Texas. There's a call out, folks. Come on down to the camps in Texas if you want to crime along with the activists because they need your help. They need your help to attack Border Patrol, to surveil Border Patrol, to make up lies about Border Patrol. They need your help to make up lies and put them in the media about the Border Patrol and how horrible and inhumane they are. That's what they want to tell you about. Uh, we'll also talk about how uh, people like uh, Jake Lee Harris are leaving Tijuana, leaving Mexico and going across the, the globe, Duke, to really? Africa, to Uganda. Oh, my God. We know that there's a lot of Africans arriving in Mexico now. Are, are, are we now exporting our human traffickers to other continents? Mm -hmm. These people are bringing all of these folks over here to be slave labor. Is this the new transnational slave trade? Might be. Happening right before my eyes? Well, Jake Lee Harris is over there doing his bit. Uh, remember, he works very closely with Lolly B, the poverty porn queen, and we will be showing you more <clears throat> about how she has been closely involved to these driving factors and people who are drivers of these caravans, funders of these caravans, movement instigators. And those at the very top in public relations, working with these politicians, working with the Hollywood actors like Yane Indigo, Desiree Kane of The Indian Problem, Seven Mc Yane Indigo is of the Black Alliance for Peace, Desiree Kane of The Indian Problem, Seven McDonald, who is the daughter of Country Joe and the Fish, if you don't know uh, who that is, uh, you'd have to go back to the 60s, 70s yeah. time period mm -hmm. when he was famous. She does public relations now and has worked on many things, including Bernie Sanders' campaign, Standing Rock, <clears throat> the Veterans Stand for Standing Rock, 
She works alongside Winnie Wong, who I told you is besties with Women's March founder Linda Sarsour, and she also worked on the Bernie Sanders campaign. So uh, we'll get started right away. But first, Duke, <coughs> I want to yeah. thank everyone out there for supporting our work and sending us messages. We'll be sending some of the comments and messages that you shared with us in previous shows, even tonight on tonight's show. So keep sending stuff our way. Thank you very much for all that you do. We can't thank you enough for your support. And especially right now, uh, we need your donations because we have to replace equipment in our studio in order to do a better job. We want to always bring you a better product, something that is um, more fun to watch, less clunky, faster, better. And uh, we can't do that without your support. Duke, how can folks help us? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, and thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, you can get a hold of us by doing many different things. We have a call-in message line if you want to give us a call and leave a voice message for us. You can call 701-566-0917. Again, that's 701-566-0917. You can tweet us at media underscore PPP. <clears throat> you can email Cindy at kpppfm.com. Or me, Duke, at kpppfm.com. Follow us on Facebook at 88.1 FM Fargo-Moorhead, the People's Press Project to Mexi-Can. Also, uh, you can find a, a public page of Cindy's at uh, by searching at Cindy Go Shemp. And our kpppfm.com website. <clears throat> it's something that I maintain, and I try to get the pages up uh, within a day after we do the shows. Uh, what we do is that we put audio podcasts up. We put the video links to YouTube up, and then you can watch the show on YouTube, which is, uh, if you go to YouTube, we, we really want you to subscribe to our channel. I need about 200, 209 more people, 209 more people to like my channel, to subscribe to my channel. It's at Duke1517. Again, it's Duke1517. It resolves Duke Gomez Shemp. We put all of the Mexican Crossing Line shows on there, and then we put them on our website at kppfm.com. Again, that's kppfm.com. Cindy mentioned donating. You have to remember, we're a nonprofit organization. We're recognized by the IRS as a 501c3, and the owners of this radio station, uh, the People's Press Project. If you'd be willing to make a donation, you can go to kppfm.com slash donate. There's a, there's a link on there where you can read a little bit about us, and then it goes to a link where you can make a tax-deductible donation to the station. You know, we need to raise, you know, money every month for us to stay alive, and we do it. We, we do fundraisers. We do direct asks. We ask people to help contribute to our station. We do underwriting, which is a chance for you to get your business on the air with a tax-deductible contribution. You will get your business name mentioned, website, telephone number, whatever you would like. And that plays on a local air to about 200,000 people. Um, but the, our nonprofit status <clears throat> does not allow us to advertise. So we can't make money advertising. So we would like you to consider making a donation. Go to kppfm.com slash donate. Make a donation. I'll send you a receipt right away. Basically, it's a reply email with the receipt right on there. And, uh, you know, help us make our goals. We, we have goals every month that we need to make. And thank you. Thank you all. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I just want to remind, remind you all of that because I know you're going to be watching the show right now and you're like, but Cindy, if I go and subscribe to the YouTube channel, I can't listen to you right now. But do it anyway, real quick. <laughs> Just go and like run over there, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Duke 1517, and then come back. And you won't miss very much, I promise. It won't be that bad. Okay, let's get started. Let me tell you where we left off last time. We were talking about the uh, embassy protest, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and Code Pink. And Medea Benjamin and her connection to some of the Caravan Support Network activists like Paola Gra Ga Ga Gabriela yeah. Khan, who I did a whole segment on, if not a whole show on. I think she might have even been in two shows way back when, when we talked about Code Pink. If you need to understand how Code Pink and people that uh, work with these uh, organizations all the way at the top have been involved, are involved in uh, this mass migration. Go back and watch my Code Pink shows. 
All you have to do is go to kppfm.com and type in caravan. Most of the shows relating to the caravan will pop up. But you can also search topically for names like Standing Rock or Venezuela Embassy. Or you can search groups or persons like Border Support Network or, uh, you know, Lolly B, hmm. Susie Desba. Yep. Okay, so you can go in and, and uh, learn more about each of these things if you don't know about them. One of the things that you may recall is how many of these folks had their start at Standing Rock. How many of the people involved in the Caravan Support Network and the Caravan Mass Migration Funding Organizing and Smuggling and smuggling operation, transnational smuggling trafficking operation. Uh, and it is incredible to me that those folks came here, did what they did, okay? Did what they did, caused millions and 30, over $30 million in costs and damages and losses to the state of North Dakota by these people that literally came here to divide, to distress, to destroy, and then ultimately made off with millions of dollars to go do this to some other state, to some other construction project, to some other issue of indigenous people that they come and carpet bag on, steal. There are people of, of uh, you know, there are people that are protesting pipelines. There are people that are protesting against their water being polluted. These people, you know what they came and did at Standing Rock when they claimed to be environmentalists that were coming to protect the sacred, which is why they call themselves water protectors. You know what a lot of them did? These activists. I'm not talking about the grassroots people. I'm not talking about even many of the people from that tribe that, that attended. I'm talking about the people they put in leadership. The people that are sold out. The people that sold out their own people. The people that raked in the millions of dollars and kept it all to themselves. That's who I'm talking about. People like LaDonna Allard. People like Phyllis Young. People like Mulaney Stoneman. Like Bill Running Fisher like L'Oreal Blackshaw, the people involved with the Veterans Stand for Standing Rock, all of those leaders, Native American leaders, who decided to work toward the, for the agenda of people like Wesley Clark Jr. and all of these Hollywood people like Francis Fisher, all of these politicians, all of these, uh, you know, different um, campaigns, masquerading as if they were actually fighting for sovereignty of indigenous people and rights. It's a lie, just like what they are telling you that they're fighting for with regard to migration, with regard to keeping families together is also a lie. Is also a lie. There are people that care about migrating uh, humans. I am one of those people. There are people that care about immigration policy. There are people that care about helping people find a pathway to citizenship in this country. In fact, I'd rather be talking about that a lot more than the nonsense that was created by these activists with regard to migration, with law, regard to laws, with regard to the wall, with regard to everything. But these people, they are not those people. They are not them. And let me tell you that when I realized what was behind this, that it was all connected to people with these political campaigns and aspirations and that they're just trying to, you know, literally create these, these uh, televised stunts in order to sway and, 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 and um, you know, make their constituents, or their, well, maybe not their constituents, their, the, the people funding them. Because that's what it comes down to for a lot of these folks. They show up at a place and it's supposed to mean something. Like when Tulsi Gabbard, who's known for her ha history of anti-gay 
uh, rhetoric, who's known for being a Hawaiian, for being a veteran, and also for being at Standing Rock. People can't stop talking about it. Tulsi Gabbard was with the Veterans Stand for Standing Rock. At least Tulsi Gabbard was at Standing Rock. What did you do? Right? Tulsi Gabbard is also involved with this whole embassy thing. Here she is getting questioned at some kind of an interview, town hall style thing. But uh, obviously it has to do with her campaign because it's got a big Tulsi 2020 sign right behind her. Mm -hmm. So here's that clip. I think you're the only one with the exception of Mike All Ravel. Right, man. <laughs> the only one with the exception of Mike Ravel who may answer yes to my question, <laughs> and it relates to Venezuela. A yes. month ago, Pompeo illegally ejected the embassy, um, the ambassador to Venezuela from the embassy. As he left, he gave the keys over to some activists from Code Pink, The Answer Coalition, and PopularResistance.org. They call themselves the Embassy Protection Collective. They've been holding down that embassy for two, for four weeks. Two weeks ago, the opposition, Guaido supporters, started... Okay, I just want to let her know what's going on, in case she doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> and they the D.C. The D.C. Police... It is a question. Will you... Um, Will you go to the Venezuelan embassy, stand with the Embassy Protection Collective, tell the D.C. police and the Secret Service to stop selectively enforcing the laws? They are arresting protectors for throwing food up. Really, we're really running out of time. This is a state. Okay, well, sorry. Your question. Okay, question. and will you introduce the bill to end sanctions on Venezuela? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm in touch with some of the folks who are there in the embassy, and I want to see what what is the most constructive action I can take to help make sure that they are not um, continuing to be treated in the way that they are. Uh, I've spoken out against those sanctions in Venezuela. There was a recent report that came out showing how many people, how many Venezuelan people have been hurt or who have been killed because of those sanctions. This is something, once again, that we have to bring to the forefront on this issue and the kind of change that we need to bring about. So whether it's through legislation or other actions, this is something that I'm going to continue to push for. <laughs> One of our uh, listeners uh, says, uh, Tulsi does not impress me. This is uh, Melinda Ann. She says, Tulsi does not impress me. Pretty face, pretty words, no actions. Actions speak louder than words. Crickets. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Well, you know, however you feel about Tulsi, no one seems to be able to stomach her. Uh, I don't know why she's still in the race. But, um, I guess you can make a lot of money off of running for president even if really? you don't win. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, hell yeah. You get to keep the money or something? Why Why do you think a lot of these people ran? Why do you think all the Republicans ran? Now, like, this is a, a repeat of 2016 for me, but except that the, 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 uh, the Democrats have, like, 20 people running. I can't even remember all the people that are running oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, honestly, I can't make heads nor tails of who would be even in the lead i've seen a lot of speculation from people about who'd be in the lead but it feels like they're all kind of unmentionables mm -hmm. in fact the most unmentionable like m m most like meh of the bunch might actually be the most interesting one just because he's super meh like almost too cool for school, man. Pete Buttigieg. Oh, yeah. Because he's just kind of like, he's like the Mr. <clears throat> Rogers mm -hmm. of the whole you know, campaign yeah. for presidency. Isn't he? Come on. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I saw him on Jimmy Kimmel. 
Yeah, I think that, you know, Buttigieg definitely reminds me of uh, Mr. Rogers. Anyway, um, there is a lot of speculation, but what I do know is that these folks, they move a lot of money and they, um, they command a lot of power. They do command a lot of power. I'd still love to ask Tulsi Gabbard how it was that she had people that, uh, you know, that she was at a, a camp where there was surveillance on all of our devices. I mean, they must have broken into her device as mm -hmm. well. And um, how it was that she ended up having a group of uh, people involving uh, former felons, criminals, anarchists, anti-government uh Antifas like Evan K. Duke the Third, the creator of the Border Support Network, the founder of the Border Support Network, people like Ed Higgins of Activate Now, the platform for that ma actress Madeline Kelly Merritt, how she could have allowed herself to have been controlled by these forces, and why she wasn't more transparent about it. And did she not know? Or she claims she doesn't know still. Is it possible these people are that naive that they don't know who's hanging around them and funding them and supporting them and then asking them to do favors for them? Could you do this for us? And then, oh, there's Jeff Merkley with actor Danny Glover, B Glover getting a, p a bill passed to stop uh, the president from declaring war on Venezuela. You know, because you just have people like that laying around. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch yesterday's show. Yep. Go back and watch yesterday's show and you will know what I am talking about. And the Answer Coalition was one of the groups that that lady mentioned in her question. She said, the Answer Coalition. And she also mentioned uh, Code Pink. Okay. We talked about Code Pink in previous shows. We're going to talk a little bit about the Answer Coalition tonight. I'm going to share a link to a video that shows the Action Coalition posted about how they were working with Jesse Jackson. So Jesse Jackson is associated with, in this video link, the Answer Coalition. But not only that, if you look at the videos from this um, visit that Jesse Jackson made. Jesse Jackson showed up at the embassy to deliver food to the protesters inside. This is giving me deja vu of mm. the shelter in Tijuana, Viento y Marea, where the activists were holed up. Oh, yeah. In a, in a, in a, building that had no ventilation and that had been closed down by the federal government for health code violations in a building where a two-year-old was uh, not refu her mother was refusing to take her to a hospital when she had pneumonia and her lungs were beginning to fill with liquid and she had spent three days with a fever of uh, almost nearly 103. This is reminding me a lot of the kind of show that they put on, the nonsense, the drama, the life risking, the clashing with cops, the calling them names, the all of that sounds really familiar to me. And it's crazy. I'm going to show you a clip of the, the, the nonsense that went on. Do we have this uh, clip here? No, remember, we couldn't get it. But I told you that there was another video that was going to replace it. I said, remember the, the video that we couldn't get? And and for Jesse Jackson, mm -hmm. that's, that's way down in the further in the script. But I can play it now if you like. I I I would like you to play it now. Where is it in the script? I don't know. I would like that one now. If you could grab it for me, I can find it. Scene, that would be scene awesome. Scene twelve. Okay, I'm going to show you what other. Wait a minute. Hold on, just a second. First, go ahead. Play the video. Uh, the sound isn't very good. 
that's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. I just want to show people what kind of a crazy nut show this turned into. All right. Here There's Jesse go. Jackson. I'll narrate a little bit because Jesse Jackson he mumbles. mumbles yep. He is a mumbler. Okay. Sounds like he's got a... Food and lights are turned off, and so we want to stand with them today. And I hope that we can be heard here in Venezuela. The, the, the attempts to, to, to pull off a coup has not worked. Right. Our foreign policy is incoherent. It was a uh, fight with Mexico and the wall, with Canada and our next door neighbors, the trade war with China. They're very supportive by here. You hear all the time, Governor Jackson. She's a real warrior. You see who that is? The guy that said he, he's a real warrior that's walking next to Jesse Jackson. The bald guy with the beard. The wireframe glasses. You recognize that dude? Next to Jesse Jackson? Dude, you recognize him? Officer! He's grabbing our food! Food. Let's see who can recognize it first. Everybody in the audience can see who that is. You want me to do? I don't want to. Big struggle. People are pulling and shoving. Thank you. Jesse Jackson is holding on to the food, and this guy is trying to steal it from us. This is what they do. Listen to me a moment. No, we don't want to listen, listen to, to you. Me. You've been yes. talking for yeah, a month. Leave. That's enough. Go, let go the of the food. I leave your people. Let go of the food. You have no authority. Which, which side are you on? Let go of the food. Okay. I know my Keep going. Somebody got scissors. Yes. Yes. Somebody right here. Somebody right here. Now they're chopping. They're chopping. They're going to drop this, like, basket or something on a string a from that window up there. A Guido Goon trying to steal our food. It's not a steal. Trying to steal. Yes, it is. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. People are playing with each other. Things. Shoving. Watch your glasses. Watch your glasses. Lots of phones and cameras out. Lots of shoving. I bring food to your people when they leave the place. This is what they've done every time. Jesse, Jesse. Watch your hand. Thank you. All right, get him. Get him. Give him to the police. Arrest Give him. him. Arrest him. Arrest this man. He just stole the food. We have it on. Food to your don't, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. He just stole the food. Officers. Can we get around Officers. here? Can we get around here? Can we get around here? Can we have the food? Do you remember when they tried to do this at the Yente Marea, the past food inside yeah, to yeah. the activists? Yep. When they talk about how they're being denied food, it sounds like, oh my God, how inhumane. Meanwhile, those people were the reason a little two-year-old girl almost, she could have died. She could have died. But she was almost taken from her parents because they put her in so much danger. She didn't want to go to the hospital because they wanted to hold space. All for a publicity stunt. All for a publicity stunt, folks. Now, this video, this encounter with Jesse Jackson and the other guy that you saw next to him, who I'm going to tell you is Ajamu Baraka. Do you remember who that is, Duke? <laughs> He was the running mate with Jill Stein okay. in 2016. Do you remember about Jen, Jill Stein in 2016? Mm -hmm. Remember when she went to Standing Rock? Yep, in the Flint. And remember that she went there with the Jamu Baraka? Mm -hmm. And do you remember that Jesse Jackson always also went to Standing Rock, Duke? Yes, I do. They're all there. All of them, folks. Here they come okay this is like a revolving door for me i'm like oh here's a job of baraka <laughs> okay here comes uh jill stein all right folks now let me go back to the spot where i was before because i want to go in order here um so the jesse jackson uh visit was for him to go there and intervene when things started getting really, uh, you know, close toward the end where they were going to shut down the camps, where they're going to bring in police, where, you know, 
everything was going to start getting shut down. That's when they brought in Jesse Jackson. Mm -hmm. That's when they brought in Dr. West, Dr. Cornell West. Yep. That's when they brought in uh, Mark Ruffalo. Mm -hmm. They brought them in because they, they used these actors to make you in America say, okay, they can keep crime and Jesse Jackson arrives, so we should just let the crime keep happening now. Whatever they're doing wrong, they just get to keep doing now because Jesse Jackson arrived, right? These people are helping them. Jesse Jackson and these folks are helping them. At the highest level, they're the driving factors for these people to keep going. And what you don't get is that the dog is being wagged by the tail. The tail is wagging the dog, folks. The very people that funded, organized, were the architects, the brainchild of the things that became the caravan and the caravan support network were a lot of these very same people. Like Francis Fisher. Like the people connected to Copink. Like the people connected to the Women's March. Like the people connected to the Rapid Response Network. Minority Humanitarian Foundation. All of the things that I have been trying to explain to you are connected to this caravan support network. So this is Jesse Jackson and the Venezuela Embassy. You can see this was posted. That's uh, the back of a Jammu Baraka's head. Oh, no, he's over there on the right. You can see his face in the little in the corner there with the glasses and the beard. Right behind Jesse Jackson. Okay. And if you look at the top. This was posted an in Instagram, and it says, uh, what does it say at the top, honey? At Embassy of the Bolivarian, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. And with the hopes of bringing food into the building still under siege. What is this uh, post from? Who posted this? Nope. Down at the bottom, please. To the right. Can we read under the picture, please? It says the Answer Coalition. Thank you. At Reverend Jackson says has arrived to show solidarity with hashtag Embassy Protection Coalition. And who is that? The Answer Coalition. One of them is the Answer Coalition. So they posted this, but it's also part of something else I'm going to share later with you. Answer Coalition, let's find out more about that. Here's a wiki that gives you a little bit more detail. As you can see, the Answer Coalition is a group, basically, of different organizations that include their Stop War and Racism. That's what this answer stands for. Act now to stop war and end racism but it is also known as International Answer and the Answer Coalition. And it's a United States-based protest umbrella. Did you hear that? Sure did. Protest. And it consists of anti-war civil rights organizations. There's a bunch of them. I'm going to tell you about them in a minute. But if you look at the bottom, it shows you some of the people involved right away. Veterans for Peace, Code Pink. We keep seeing those things. Mm -hmm. We've kept seeing those things throughout this whole process. Here are some of the chapters in the different cities of Code Pink that are available. Um, I tried to find out who's on their board and stuff. Couldn't find that out. Couldn't find. But uh, I could find their webpage and they've got chapters in... Albuquerque, Boston, Chicago, Connecticut, Los Angeles, New York City, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Sacramento, San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle, Syracuse. Yeah. So they're all over, folks. And if you want to know how many groups are involved in the Answer Coalition, uh, these are some of them. These are some of the groups. Veterans for Peace, Code Pink, United, United for Peace and Justice, Peace Action, September 11 Families, National Campaign for a Peace Tax, 
uh, War Resistance League, Friends Committee on Nation, National, uh, I don't know what the rest of that is, Military Families Speak Out, Iraq Veterans Against the War, Women's International League for Peace, and y- there's more, guys. There's still more. I'm sorry. Um, Voices for Creative Nonviolence, Amnesty International, Physicians for Social Responsibility, Jewish Voices for Peace. Mm-hmm. Jewish Voices for Peace. The Fellowship Reconciliation, Stop the Coalition, Greenpeace, Greenpeace folks, and MoveOn.org. Some of those are just like, "Uh uh-huh, yes, I knew it. Yeah. But some of those are just like, hmm, right? We didn't know that much. Exactly. And the National Lawyers Guild also jumped in to the fray. They're weighing in on this. Just like they've come out in support of al otro lado and all of that. Here comes the lawyers. You saw Vanessa Dundon of the Border Support Network and a guy named Nate Dennison that posted in there recently talking about how the lawyers from the ACLU had Mm -hmm. their back now and they're looking at their uh, case case against the Department of Homeland Security for putting them on a watch list. Uh Uh-huh. There's a reason they're on the watch list. It's a good reason. So anyway, Popular Resistance posted, the National Lawyers Guild demands that law enforcement immediately refrain from exposing the peaceful invitees and their supporters inside and outside the hashtag Venezuelan embassy to harm in violation of their fundamental human rights. At NLG News, at Code Pink. Oh, yeah. Hmm. How convenient. Mm -hmm. I'll also share the news from The Hill. This is a link to the article I'm about to show you, a screen capture of, in which they're talking about the fact that four activists got arrested Uh. today for protesting at the Venezuela Embassy in Washington, for more than a month now. They've been doing this for more than an... They've been occupying the embassy for over a month. Duke, I I know we haven't been really like following every <coughs> detail closely, but what do you think of this occupation? It's nonsense. Most of these are, are, aren't are even Venezuelans. They're not... They don't, they're not representative of the people no, of it's Venezuela. Just, <coughs> it's these, these activists, hacktivists, Antifa people who are just trying to create, they're trying to create these actions and get in on them like Occupy Wall Street style. You know, yep. it started way back then, actually started before them with the uh, World Bank in Seattle. That was kind of like one of the first starters of all, all the kids with skateboards basically went out there and hung out, you know, couch surfing for a month and occupying there. And it's the same sort of thing. And <clears throat> they're trying to get press coverage and just trying to raise money and trying to it, trying to put attention to this issue that they're not doing a very good job. It doesn't translate. It hasn't been like, it hasn't been covered very much. It's um, it's uh, malaligned ideas. There's uh, they claim that there's no central leadership, but they have a central leadership that basically basically has gotten it wrong with doing this sort of occupation style stuff. Um, you know, people have been doing that for years. You know, there's been all sorts of groups, and there's been again really effective groups with effective strategies. This ain't one of them. No. But they are driving factors in what's going on. They do. Okay, now uh, here is the Border Support Network administrators. Just for a refresher, they include Chanel Helm, sex worker. Lily Sinclair, Errol Medicine, Jamie Sapowski, and then they have Gary Lolly B, Gary Brewer, Lolly B, and 21 others who are moderators. Hmm. Let's go to the moderators next here. Uh, these are the moderators minus a couple. I only recognize Wombly Wikasa because that's Wiaka Eagleman, Doug McLean. Vivian Farmery, Joe Plouffe, Jana Stone, um, and Jessica Prozinski, uh, as well as uh, blah, 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 any others? No. Um, 
all of whom were involved with Standing Rock and are now involved with the Texas camps or the caravans, mm. um, accompanying, escorting I see. the caravans, giving them bad legal advice, uh, making money off of them, doing poverty porn videos and fundraisers and crying because they want to help them so much and they're so sad that they're sending them to go to a detention facility that where they will likely be separated from their children and um, that you keep doing it and you keep doing it and you keep doing it even though you know that you know that you know that most of these people will not get asylum. In your own words, you said that. Hmm. I should still have that video. I should play it again today. Every single time. Yep. Every single show. Mm -hmm. So I could prove to you, they know, these activists know they're sending people to a dead end. And along the way, these kids are dying. Along the way, people are getting sick. Along the way, people are getting kidnapped along the way people are getting propositioned they're getting raped they're being defrauded but these people don't care in fact they work with or friends with the very people doing these things they're working with the people that are smuggling them they're working with the people that are taking advantage of them they are working with the people or are the very people that are making money off of these folks images and stories and suffering and this article uh, in the rancherita.com Mexican News shares the photo, the mugshot of a recently uh, detained Negropetense, that means a uh, man from Piedras Negras, Coahuila, okay, right across the border from Eagle Pass, Texas, mm -hmm. where a lot of these illegal crossings in the water have been videotaped, have been seen, where there was a large contingent of caravan goers that ended up in a shelter that they tried to burn down. Remember with the MS-13? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. All of that we reported on earlier. According to this report, Duke, Jose Aguilar Rodriguez, the man pictured in this photo, a 26-year-old from the town of Piedras Negras, was detained at the bridge number two in Eagle Pass, because they had a warrant for his arrest for trafficking, for, for human smuggling, and for, uh, for, and for attacking, for, um, for human smuggling, and for assaulting an officer. He assaulted wow. an officer. So what happened was that the, the uh, Maverick County Sheriff Tom Schmerber said that this man had already got had already gotten an arrest warrant out for him given the fact that in another uh another time when he was confronted with police while he was uh smuggling people he was caught red-handed while he was smuggling people and the border patrol authorities chased him and when they when they gave chase he assaulted one of the officers getting away. Okay. So that's why there was already a warrant out for his arrest. Yeah, that's what's happening. These people are not just smuggling. They're not just putting the people that they're smuggling at risk. They are hurting. They are injuring. They are assaulting Border Patrol at both borders. That's what's happening, folks. They've killed Border Patrol in, in Mexico. I wonder if some of the people here who are apathetic to this are waiting for that to happen here in the United States before something is done about it. But here's what's going on. Um, he was detained on Wednesday at the International Bridge and he will be turned over to FBI for ongoing investigation. He's in a federal prison today, this man. Also, here's another story of a Border Patrol agent, uh, Border Patrol agents who have, um, they have captured two of the 
uh, human smugglers that were crossing people in those inflatable pools that we showed you and talked about and, sh and, and were telling you that were putting people's lives at risk. And then there were people just filming it for, for clickbait. For, they're making money on, on these YouTube channels on, off of filming people while they're practically crossing them and pushing their little inflatable rafts in the process of filming them, like El Valedor. Right, Duke? Right. Yeah, that's something. When I saw that going on. <clears throat> and I also saw <clears throat> this guy taking people over. You know, a really, really rough, rough current in the river, you know. Really large river has all sorts of undercurrents. And these kiddie pools taking people over. And he takes them all the way over to the, the swift boats. And then he takes his pool and he paddles back all the way across the river again. Because he's going to use it again for another family or another group of people he's going to take across. I thought, you know, why aren't they, like, pulling that guy out? They're just letting him go back. Would they let people swim back? I don't I, think so. I was I was sitting there doing the same thing. I'm like, what is wrong with this video? <laughs> How come Border Patrol isn't yanking that those guys out of the water going, you're all going to jail? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what's going on? Well, apparently <laughs> they've been apprehended. So, Border Patrol gave, um, made known the arrest of these human smugglers, to uh, both of whom are Mexican, to the authorities um, as they were crossing people from Honduras uh, uh, through the uh, Rio Bravo, through the Rio Grande, as you Americans call it. We Mexicans call it El Rio Bravo. And... Um, they were arrested. They arrested these along with 10 undocumented people. They were arrested together. Hmm. These human smugglers don't take into account the safety of the people they are smuggling. They only care about their earnings, said the interim chief for Border Patrol, uh, Randy Davis from the Del Rio sector office. Hmm. And he's right. They're there watching them do this on the swift boats every day. They're pulling lifeless bodies of little children. They're pulling little babies that go into the water as young as 10 months old. They know the dangers that these smugglers are willing to put people in for a few hundred dollars in cash. Hmm. And that is what we have to remember because all of these people that are these activists in the Caravan Support Network want you to think they're human rights defenders. They're trying to prevent deaths. They're not doing anything criminal. They're trying to help people fleeing the... Uh, natural disaster in Central America that, no, wait, that's not the driving factor. Uh, oh, they're, they're, they're fleeing the war in Central oh, America. Go, wait, no, no, that's no. not the driving it's, factor. What was it again? The environment. It's the environment, isn't it? No, it's not that either. Actually, they keep selling us that the driving factor are the natural push factors <clears throat> of poverty, the natural push factors of and of course, those things exist. It is one of the reasons why people migrate. Not, but that wasn't what we were told. And that's not the, uh, the pretext under which they're coming into our country. They're coming into our country in the loophole of asylum seeking. And as I've already told you, as we already know, asylum uh, laws have not changed. Therefore, you cannot flee your country for the natu natural push factors uh, of of uh, gang violence and poverty and come and seek asylum because your claim will be denied since we don't accept asylum claims on that basis. So folks like these who are out in the media right now having their hands uh, constrained, if you will, <laughs> Uh, for their activities, 
like the group No More Deaths that has been featured in The Intercept by Ryan Devereaux and Scott Warren, the guy that uh, is real is facing as like up to 20 years, Duke, is it? Yeah, I think so. For, they claim, for nothing more than just putting down water, water yep. in the desert. That's what border angels claim that they're doing. They're mm-hmm. just they're just putting water and and things in the desert. The past uh, the people in Tijuana know they're coyotes. The pe- the people in Tijuana, even the pastor was like, Cindy. The border angels, they're not just putting water. He's like, no, no, no. They're not just dropping water. Those people give them directions. They tell them where to cross. Mm-hmm. They they. I told you, they took the job of coyotaje, they took the job of the coyote and chopped it up into a bunch of pieces, and then they use the Occupy Wall Street, there are no leaders, there are no leaders mantra to unlink themselves from each other, to pretend that they're not all working together and that they're not committing crimes internationally. That's what they want you to believe. So they've got a lot of support, a lot of help in their in their cover up, including Ryan Devereaux of the Intercept that carries water for them, including Amy Goodman of Democracy mm-hmm. Now, including a lot of these politicians, including TYT, the Young Turks, the place where Mark Lane works, and a whole bunch of other magazines and publications and platforms I have told you about, many of which were created, many of which started at Standing Rock. So one of these groups that has uh, been featured is No More Deaths. This is a screen capture of the uh, YouTube page where they have videos. Most of them are pretty old. Okay. Three, four, seven years. There is one, I believe only one video from last year when they were raided by Border Patrol. Because... Hmm. Folks, the jig is up. They didn't, they don't just have, folks, I'm just going to break this down for you. Here's what's going on, okay? They don't just have uh, people dropping water because, see, this whole um, activist putting water in the desert for the migrants, it evolved naturally as people that live in the area were finding dead bodies. We're, we're realizing that there was a bunch of people that were dying in the desert because they didn't get it, you know, they didn't have any water. And so what they would do is that they decided they couldn't stand to, you know, carry more bodies out of the desert like that. They were going to go and leave some water in the desert. And uh, these consisted of groups connected to churches, uh, priests, things like that, right? And then, and then what happened is that uh, with the changes in border towns being populated more and more with more border security and more border patrol and their families living there on those border towns, the, the routes, the migration routes started to change, you know. And ever since Reagan, we've had an increase in border security and increase in border wall building by every administration, including Democrat support. Which is why y'all should be asking yourself, why are the Democrats for the first time in the history of immigration policy in America saying no border, no wall? The border, the border wall is, is, uh, what did Nancy Pelosi call it? Did she say it was inhumane? She says inhumane. No, she said something else too. She said like it was morally. Oh, uh, immoral. Immoral. That's right. She called it immoral, like it was violating some law of God, some moral code, right? Yep. And that is what these people who are saying that families belong together and all these things, these mantras that they just keep, you know, barking at you. This is what they are talking about. They're talking about the fact that they have this moral authority and that this new thing requires that people have the right to migrate. Migrating is completely natural. Don't talk about sovereignty, laws, border walls, none of it. Otherwise, you're a Nazi. Case closed. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Mm-hmm. That is the level of discourse in America on this topic, folks. 
So here's the, the, you know, the escalation of what happened with the groups like the first, second generation iterations of No More Deaths because there are other organizations with different names that were doing this before No More, no More Deaths began doing this, right? And what they would do is, okay, well now we can't just leave water close to our town where we see people die and we have to go further into the desert where the new migration patterns are mm. and put it out there. And, you know, the ability of these groups, these humanitarian groups to go and do that uh, or to, you know, continually replenish those supplies became more and more limited. As, and also the people that were doing that stuff began to age out and pass away and new groups were formed. And so um, th I think the second or third generation of these groups managed to put out these water, like giant water tanks that they would mm -hmm. come by and refill with trucks every so often so that there was like just water out there all the time at certain locations. Um, but the group like this one, No More Deaths, which is one of the more recent groups, although it's had, it's, it's good, you know, decade of history um it became more radical in the sense that it was uh going to catch border patrol in the act like a lot of these activists are talking like they're gonna watch border patrol they're gonna document but what we've heard over and over again from witnesses that have captured them including the border patrol cameras is that these activists aren't just there to provide at first aid like they claim Neither do they have any medical backgrounds to be providing that first aid. But no matter, because it's not what they're really doing. They're not just there to take pictures like some of these uh, journalists um, claiming to be journalists that are just there to document what the activists and what the migrants are doing as they cross over into the United States. Uh, many of them have been caught. Many have been, uh, have been seen helping, prompting, or aiding and abetting, if you will. And that's why they're on a list for Homeland Security. One of the people facing nearly 20 years in prison is Scott Warren. And Scott Warren is part of this group called No More Deaths. And Scott Warren is also one of the people that was teaching the Tohono O'Dam, one of those two tribes on that Border Support Network chalkboard that the Border Support Network anarchists, Antifa activists, led activist groups, violent anti-American activist groups are working with. They're working with people that claim they're going to go document, but they're not. They're going to go document a violent clash between Border Patrol, between the migrants, between their, their subject matter that they're going to film, they're going to make money off of it. Yeah, all of that stuff. But they're also going to instigate it. They're also going to plan it. They're also going to push for it and then film it and then sell it. And they get more clicks and more donations off of it. And it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So let me tell you what's really going on out in the desert. What's really going on out in the desert is that now these folks from No More Deaths that are out there to document, one of the bigger successes that they had over time is that they put these cameras out there, you know, like those hunting cameras, mm -hmm. to capture what the Border Patrol was doing around the places where they were leaving the water, and they caught Border Patrol slashing the water jugs in the desert. Okay. Now, they got a lot of mileage off of that, including that the, fa the fact that the Border Patrol, or, or so they claim, came to some kind of truce with them where they stopped patrolling this area. This particular area, which kind of became an underground railroad for people in these organizations, which included clergy and nuns, etc., that were actually bringing undocumented people in in a smuggling operation. They were prosecuted, and there was such an outcry because they were going to face numerous years in prison, and it was something we kind of unheard of, a bunch of clergy going to jail, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that... Uh, their sentences were essentially commuted to, you know, three to five years probation each, and oh. that ended. Wow. But let me tell you that over this period of time, 
there has been a steady development of locations, recovery locations. You really can't call them shelters because they wouldn't meet the standard for human occupancy, maybe not even for animal occupancy. But nevertheless, they have some out there equipped with uh, the, the, the bare bones needs for you to get water, some kind of coverage over your head, and the ability to rest up, sleep, eat, recover, so you can actually finish the journey, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they, these folks have actually set up out there. That could be considered not just, uh, you know, helping. It's considered aiding and abetting, and especially if you are making money off of it. Most of these activists, like Nicole Ramos, uh, they will all tell you, we're just volunteering. We don't make any money while they travel literally all over the world yeah. doing this from place to place to place to place. If you don't have any money, then how in the hell are you traveling all over the world? Yep. Yeah. Literally all over. And if you don't make any money off of this, then why aren't you dead? Why aren't you? Why haven't you starved? Because mm -hmm. these folks don't have jobs. None of them. All of them have spent their going from one place to the next place to the next place doing this. Living in camps, living out of their cars, living out of hotels, flying from one place to the next, carpooling from one place to the next. Living off of their GoFundMes, living off of their Venmos, living off of their PayPals. I am a lowly activist. I need your money to survive. I am practically homeless. I live off of your goodness. Please Venmo me so I can go and be a uh, bum uh, in, in Tijuana. Yep. I want to go help. I want to go help drop water in the desert in the summertime. I want to put that on my resume. A lot of the people involved in No More Deaths are college students, people that I, like I describe right now, that want to put something on their resume. And this screen capture um, is uh, to a YouTube video. I can share the link for you guys to go check it out for yourselves. I'm going to play for you this video so you can see what they uh, rated. And what, uh, what happened is that they actually set up camp in the area. They've got what they claim are medics out there. They're not really medics. And they don't have medical training. They don't have any kind of, no. Um, in the United States and in most other countries, actually, they don't just let you set up fake clinics with fake doctors that don't have a right to practice medicine. But you have a lot of these activists that are like, I am an EMT, or I was trained in yoga, or <laughs> I... <laughs> I am an herbalist. And I'm like, okay, but that doesn't allow you to set up a camp. That doesn't give you the moral authority to rip a mother and daughter away from each other and send Mary Trujillo to a hospital to die. And that's exactly what these uh, medics have done. Melanie Stoneman was a medic and she kidnapped an old woman and put another one in jail. There's a lot of these medics who are pretty freaking dangerous, if you ask me. And aren't they first supposed to do no harm? Mm -hmm. But I digress. This is the video of Border Patrol rolling up on their so-called clinic out in the desert and telling them that they're going to go in there and take undocumented people out. And then, of course, they started charging the folks in this smuggling operation because at some point, this turned from a rescue operation into a money-making for your nonprofit operation, and it's part of a smuggling chain. That's what you're doing. Then you're, if that's what you're doing, then that's what you're going to go to jail for. Don't call it humanitarian aid. Here's that video. Helicopter flying and the Border Patrol cars are lined up on the road. There's a bunch of they're showing, showing a bunch of Border Patrol walking into a little road, a little path. Yep. 
There's a lot of them. Yep. Massive raid. This They're all walking is our in. clinic behind us. Um, we do have patients in there, um, but there are, are also two volunteers in there providing medical care. So that is who is in there, and I'm just coming in to double check if it's okay if the medical, if folks who are providing medical assistance can remain in there. Sure, for right now, yes. Okay, so there are two people in there who are helping to provide medical care. Okay. And then that is all of our volunteers. Okay. This lady, can you, ma'am, if you know her, can you get her over with the group? Military style tent back there. And then there's like a rounded dome. Big tent. Can it's I like the one that they had at uh, Sandy Rock. Yep. It's like geodesic dome. Yeah, geostatic. And then they're hauling away some linen cuffs. They covered up an extra tarp on the outside, kind of like so you can't see what's going on inside in any way. Mm hmm. Because when at night, especially when you lit up that dome, you could see yeah. everything. That was, you know, you could see shadows. Basically. And by the way, that geodesic to dome, they it, it was borrowed from Burning Man. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this one was uh, one of the Burning Man geodesic domes as well. Mm -hmm. To think they were probably having orgies in there, and now they're <laughs> now they're. Uh, using it to smuggle miners. Mm -hmm. So there's some guns drawn. And, and dusty road. And a dusty road and the border patrol head out. Into the horizon. Yes. Okay. So. And um, there is an article in The Intercept that talks about uh, no more deaths. Questioning after this raid occurred. Questioning why the border patrol is surveilling them <laughs> really it's not apparent to you i love all of these really stupid stupid uh, articles in the intercept and i call them stupid because they ask the stupidest questions like why are all of these journalists activists and even clergy on a department of homeland security watch list hmm why would that be those agencies, when asked that question, answered that they would only be doing that if these folks were trying to do something criminal that violated the law, that they would have probable cause to investigate because they've got some evidence that points to some kind of criminal activity. That's why. That's why. And in the case of no more deaths, I am assuming the same thing. What's really interesting to me is that all of this is the same area of the Tohono O'Dom. And this guy was actually working with the Tohono O'Dom, Scott Warren, the one that is now facing so many years. And one, on one of their other videos of no more deaths, they show, by the way, this uh, screen capture that you have up right now. Mm -hmm is the only video that they have this, I think, from from this year. Wow. And, and it, yeah, all the rest of them, like I said, are really, really super old. And um, you see that um, they're on the Tohono O'Dams territory in Ajo, Texas. And Ajo, Texas is where Scott Warren was uh, living and teaching and um, going on the Tohono O'Dam reservation. And as we know... Uh, Irineo Mujica, the guy from the uh, interviews in the Univision um, article or story that was similar, very, very suspiciously similar to the reporting I did, including my interviews with people at the Agape Shelter. But you will remember from that I played you a clip that Irineo Mujica has a transport service over the border at Louisville, Arizona. And Sonoita, Mexico, which is the exact location near where the Tohono O'Dam are. He calls it a taxi service. Oh. I call it a coyote service. Mm -hmm. Potato, potato. <laughs> uh, I guess um, the Department of Homeland Security and Border Patrol will uh, break that tie. Alex Mensing, who is also uh, associated with the uh, 
Pueblo Sin Fronteras group that has been investigated and is being accused of human smuggling and also trafficking is also behind the No More Deaths group. Please join Pueblo Sin Fronteras in solidarity with our um, smuggling pals at <laughs> No More Deaths in calling for Michael Bailey to drop all the charges on Scott Warren. They definitely cover each other's butts for sure because the reason is they're all criming together. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why birds <clears throat> of a feather flock together. Crime together. Yeah. And they also want, uh, you know, to promote the people that are part of their smuggling operation, not at, in a positive way, so that people will trust them and so people will listen to them. Another person that you saw in that Univision article that featured all of these different smugglers, but tried to question, but we don't know for sure. They said they're not doing it. Mm. I said he swore on his mom's life. Yeah. So I suppose we should believe him. Another one of these human smugglers that I've shown you was working with the Caravan Support Network in Tijuana at El Barretal and who the reporter from Univision said she saw in Tegucigalpa and a whole bunch of different places, cities, all the way down in the uh, Central American Triangle and throughout Mexico on repeated occasions accompanying, escorting the caravan Ulises Ortiz. And Ulises Ortiz was, uh, in this video screenshot that I'm showing on screen, where you can clearly see that picture, that man is Ulises Ortiz, was interviewed by one of the people that traveled with the caravan, along with Myron Dewey and Jesse Sandoval. This Ulises Ortiz is being interviewed by none other than Benito, Mil Milton Benitez, excuse me, El Perro Amarillo, uh, a media platform, one of the media allies in the Spanish-speaking world from Honduras that, um, that was messaging to the people within this caravan what they should be doing, how they should be doing it, where they can, where, where they should be staying, what shelter, what, what demands did they have, what should they be saying to the people uh, that are in leadership in the United States. And here is a clip of that interview where Ulises is being uh, interviewed by El Perro Marillo. Here you go. que solo vamos a ir a apostarlos a meterlos a la fuerza, no es así. Exigimos que se haga el proceso más personas. No los queremos meter a la fuerza porque estamos cometiendo, sabemos que cometemos un delito y no somos criminales. Si nosotros hacemos una marcha es para enseñarles, para exigirles de que el proceso se haga más. Si se ahora se piden 30 personas, queremos que el día de mañana se pidan 100, 200 personas para que esta, para que esto que estamos pasando, esta miseria que estamos pasando aquí se termine. No queremos estar todo un año, dos años aquí porque sería uno la So what he said there was that they're not that, you know, what, what's being said in the media, that they're like uh, criminals, that they are um, people, you know, uh, doing things the wrong way. That's not true. They don't want that. They simply want to come in the proper way. And they want this nightmare of what, which was him pointing behind him to the Benito Juarez uh, Park, the shelter that they were first using and saying he wanted that tragedy to end. He has been one of the central figures as we now know. And that was what's from when they were still outside in the Benito Juarez. That's an old video. Okay, okay. As we now know, this guy's been bringing thousands and thousands of people. He is responsible, personally responsible hmm. for making that nightmare go on and on and on. Duke, what do you think of these uh, media allies that are helping them? The media allies? Oh, I think yeah, like Perro Amarillo, like The Intercept, like all of these people. Oh, they're, they're doing a horrible job. I mean, they, they aren't digging for anything. I mean, they're bringing up stuff just like they're working hand-in-hand in hand with the infiltrators. So they're producing these new stories that aren't well-researched, and they keep on towing the same line 
and keep on telling the same stories that the kind of uh, they've created this activist point of view on what's really happening. Anyone else comes in and does any media, they say, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Cindy's been accused of, she doesn't know what goes on down here. She's not down here reporting. She went down there. By the way, she knows even more what's going on. She's known what's been going on because she's been connecting with real people that live there who are doing r- real reporting. These, uh, these places that, that are these big, big alternative media places like The Intercept are producing crap. You know, The Intercept is, is, is famously been producing stuff that exactly isn't truthful. I mean, it's like, it's, it's like the, they've, they've been towing the line of the activists and acting like they're anti-establishment. And what they're doing is that they keep on producing lies. So I, I, don't, I don't agree with those sources. I don't think they do very good stories. I don't think they dig deep enough. You know, it's been proven left and right and left and right that um, the stuff they report on and the stuff they leave out. Because we find information every day. And part of the problem, I think, is because there's so much in Spanish. And Cindy, of course, is gifted in bilingual English, Spanish, and uh, some other languages. But she really has a knack to be able to watch Mexican media and really know what's going on. Whereas a lot of the white Americans don't. So they never get that news. They never believe it. And they never use it. So, you know, that's what I think. I agree. I agree. So many of these media people are doing more harm than good. They're misinforming the public. And um, they're only scratching the surface at what's really going on. Let me tell you that uh, these activists at these Texas camps right now, they're being promoted by people at the very top. People like Kei Kurimoto. She was here posting Lilith Sinclair. This is Lilith Sinclair's post, uh, posted by Kei Kurimoto. As we know, she worked with the media people, the pho- photographers, and all of the Hollywood and PR people. Um, and she w- was uh, down in Mexico for quite a while, from the Viento y Marea period of time, mm-hmm. working right alongside Lolly B and Jake Lee, working right alongside uh, the uh, activists like Evan Duke, and um, all of the folks that we showed you from the Border so- Support Network, Jesse, J- Jamie Sikap- Skapowski, mm-hmm. and um, a whole bunch of the folks that we showed you that were in the uh, Viento y Maria shelter, right? Um, the same folks that later went to the Agape shelter, the same folks that were involved in giving drugs to the people in the caravan that went to the Agape shelter, the same folks who were involved in the kidnapping of an unaccompanied minor named Carlos. Remember the progression? Yeah. That's Kei Kurimoto posting sex worker Lilith Sinclair's post from Tuesday about how they were flooded out at their camp down at the Yaoli village. And if you go to Kei Kurimoto's tags, the, the, the tags on that, you'll notice who's tagged in the camp's post, you've got Doug Warren, Jan Juan, Krista Moncias, Jeremy Blackbear, Christopher Huron, Mason Bobby Leonard, oh, the yeah. drone pilot that's down there, Christopher Francisco, and then there's um, Chris, Krista Mancias. Krista, that's the same people. You have to go to the bottom. Cindy Cochran, Gerald Toole, and Juan Mancias. And finally, um, here's the actual post so you can read what it says. Can you read that for me, Duke? Yeah, I sure can. Uh, Lilith Sinclair is with Dwayne Redwater and 11 others. The morning started early here at Yaolui Village with a 5 a.m. clap of thunder, dancing bolts of lightning and sudden onslaught of rain. All the villagers were awoken to a downpour of rain. Loud and close lightning bolts and shaking, flooding tents trembled in the wind. By 7 a.m. the rain had stopped. By 8 a.m. the sun shone. By 9 a.m. the flooding was beginning to abate. The day carried on as normal after that, starting with breakfast and then chores. Tents had to be dried out. Clothes and towels had to be hung. The flash storms and subsequent flooding have been occurring on and off today and will possibly throughout the week. Well, we face flooding and other issues here miles away 
this. Customs and Border Patrol keeps migrant children and families in outdoor cages unsheltered from the elements during thunderstorms. That's right. Local police and Border Patrol send cars past the village at varying intervals on a daily basis. Access to the levee is still restricted. We need more people here willing to follow the leadership of indigenous people. Let me pause there. That is the trope. That is the lie. That is the propaganda that we heard from these very same Antifa anarchist, mostly white folk that were telling people, come to Standing Rock, but you must be ready to follow the Indians and their leadership of blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. What? No, Wes Clark Jr. is not an Indian. Francis Fisher is not an Indian. The only real Indian among the group of those at the very top that are the driving factors here, the real driving factors, is somebody like Jay Ponte. <laughs> but they told us, no, no, the real liter leader here isn't the person funding. They're not the ones with their hands up Chase ironizes, but they're not the ones funding Winona LaDuke. They're not the ones funding Errol Medicine, Wiaka Eagleman, Dwayne Redwater, Lilith Sinclair. No, they're not. So we know that these people don't really want to follow the leadership or don't want the activists. The activists don't have to follow the leadership of native people and what their what their real mission is which is as they say to protect the sacred they're on a mission to help the people that are part of this smuggling operation and they're on a mission to make it look like they're environmentalists while they're doing it and they're making a ton of money juan uh, luis monsevice at least was honest in his video in which he said he had a money-making business being a coyote and been doing it for years with his family. Mm -hmm. They're real good at it. Yep. Some of them, some of these activists down there, at least are willing to tell you the truth. Maybe Louis Monsevice is the only one that is willing to admit that he is a criminal. But uh, the rest of these folks are just as much doing the same things and covering it up. On uh, the Border Patrol post, they continue. Listen to how it sounds like, you know, suddenly Lily Sinclair turns into an Indian. Watch how she morphs. We need help protecting the earth, her land, her water, and her children. Us and our four-legged and our winged relatives. See how she turned into an Indian? Yep. <laughs> we need help documenting the process of the wall, the pipelines, and the LNG terminals they're falsely calling critical infrastructure. We need help educating people as to why we're really here. We need you. And then she says, follow the Build a Village, Save the Earth project at Yaoli Village. Follow the tribe at Carrizo Comacrigo Tribe, Texas. Okay. We've seen this before. It happened at Standing Rock. We know how this goes. Uh, and this is the um, Aje Payasel. It's obviously another uh, camp. Or okay. maybe uh, this is what the new Water is Life camp. I see. Because Ahipaya Sel, I think they, they, they have to have their, their logo from Standing Rock. Yeah, yeah. You know, they just they have to rebrand with their mm -hmm. logo from Standing Rock. So they're like, so, uh, how do you say water is life? Yeah, really. Because they, they put that everywhere. Mm -hmm. El agua es la vida, lo es la vida. I mean, everywhere, everywhere, in every language that they can. So Ahipaya Sel, and then they've got in whatever uh, the, you know, Tejona Odam or Carrizo Come Crudo language this might be i'm not sure which it is if it e even is they're translating a whole bunch of different words including the um uh water is life but somisek means ancestral land of the 
Estokan, I can't see, encompasses both sides the Ahuma Tau Metel. And then they, you know, Ahuma Tau Metel is the Rio Gran, Grande, but it's not r the Rio Grande, it's the Rio Bravo. Pick a, pick a language. <laughs> is it Rio Grande River? Because Grand doesn't have an E on it. Okay. These, this is these, these, all these people went to the Luis Montevice <laughs> Pendejo School because they don't know Mexicans <clears throat> call it the <throat> Rio Grande, the Rio Bravo, excuse me, and the Americans call it the Rio Grande, the Rio Grande River. Anywho, um, the next uh, post by Kor Kai Kurimoto is one in which she is congratulatory, congratulating a woman who uh, posts about her recap of her visit to the border, a woman named Melissa Galecki, G Galek, maybe? Galek. And um, as you will find, the Melissa uh, post is about her visit to volunteer with Al Otro Lado. And here she asks you to Venmo and PayPal her so she can do that. Uh. Hi, folks. I'm going to go and help Al Otro Lado's Nicole Ramos give people legal advice without a license in Mexico. <laughs> uh, tell people to sign up for sponsorships in the United States without really giving people much in information about what that's going to entail. I'm going to help advise uh, um, people in Mexico about going and demanding asylum rights when they will definitely not qualify for asylum, even if they don't qualify for asylum. And um, we're going to help Al Otro Lado raise a lot of money off of the suffering of people. Could you please PayPal her? She says, this is the post that she did in May. She says, I'm heading back to Tijuana to volunteer for a week with a nonprofit that provides free legal assistance, except they don't. Yeah. To asylum seekers, if you'd like to support me, you can give me, you can give me via PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. They all, they're all set. Yeah. As a small business owner, she doesn't get paid off, paid, paid time off, and her expenses will be around nine hundred dollars a week, including her flight, Airbnb, meals, and ground transportation, wow. and. Your donation will also help her make other trips like this. So if you want to continue to fund this mass migration that is hurting our country and Mexico, please donate to Al Otro Lado. That's what they want you to do. Mm -hmm. And she says, please note that I can also bring you a gift, your gift as a cash donation to Al Otro Lado if you would prefer. Just notate that on your donation. Please note that your gift to me is not tax deductible. If you'd prefer, you can donate directly to Al Otro Lado to support their border rights project. That's the one that Nicole Ramos runs. Okay. okay? They also have an Amazon wish list that she posts. This is where the money goes. And the people that promote this kind of nonsense and the people that put big dollars in these kinds of accounts are Kei Kurimoto and the crew. The people like Francis Fisher, the people that are at the top. And... Kei Kurimoto is very fond of not only taking pictures with the migrants and doing fundraisers off of their faces, off of their bodies at the shelter like she did from the Agape shelter. How much money did she uh, give to the Agape shelter? None. But, Good, um, yeah. or Lolly B or Jake Lee. All of them were making money off of these migrants in the pictures. But she has also got... Uh, she, she's got a Joe Biden problem. Look, yeah, yeah. look at her kissing migrants. Here she is getting too close for comfort in a post where she's talking about how much she loves the people that she's been with for three and a half months. And here she is with her arm around uh, that guy that Adam Elfers is making a band with. And she's got another shirtless boy sitting in front of her. And then. She's sitting on a couch next to another dude. She's got her arm around. She's kissing him. And there's another migrant she's kissing. Just a lot of grabby, feely people here with yeah, the migrants. I don't guess. you think? Uh -huh. It's a little bit inappropriate. Yep. 
to me it is. It, lo- it looks and feels completely inappropriate that y'all are like kissing the migrants. Here's Kay, uh, Kay Kurimoto with Jake Lee in this post uh, where she's thanking Pedro Nunez, one of the people in the photos, for asking Jake Lee for a cigarette because that sparked one of the most splendidly evolved uh, events into a family. Yeah. And she said that, well, why don't you read from there? We are from Honduras, Guatemala, Colombia. Yeah, the we family. are from Honduras, Guatemala, Colombia, the United States. It's been a journey to learn each other's cultures, share our stories, live together, cry together, and misunderstand each other a lot through language barriers. And with each new communication glitch, each new asylum procedure process with an unknown future, each new struggle to support basic needs of food, shelter, water, and hygiene, with each new wall we faced together, we fully relied on each other, and our bonds grew deeper and stronger. And when you come together in this way, as a unit, as a team, oftentimes then you are forced to take a deeper look at yourself. And because they have loved me as a mother, a sister, and a friend, I am forever changed. We have empowered each other to be better versions of ourselves and better people in the world. There's more. Oh, it must be on the second part. That's why there's two posts. Okay. Yes, there are real solutions needed for many different issues facing the world today. However, the message from Standing Rock still rings true. Oh, yeah. Because, of course, remember, this nonsense where they put a bunch of people, many of them just innocent bystanders that came to the camp, in actions where they had rubber bullets and tear gas tossed at them, in situations where they had violent clashes with police, where they exploited and just basically used thousands and thousands of people as extras, people that had no idea what the hell they were doing, that cost the people of North Dakota over $30 million that these people did not take accountability for. And that is how they forged these relationships based on trauma, shared trauma at Standing Rock. A lot of these folks even got tattoos on their arms to commemorate the shared trauma they experienced as activists in Standing Rock. All created by themselves, of course, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Continuing on this post, she says, first we heal ourselves, then our families, then our communities, then the world. That's that's hilarious that yeah. she would say, first we heal ourselves. How are you healing anything mm-hmm. when you are creating mass migration? How are you not creators of mass massive amounts of pain, chaos, cost? Um, she starts uh, naming the people in their group, in their family, yeah. mm-hmm. their manufactured family, Pedro, Brian, Douglas, Brian, Gerardo, Angel, Manuel, Jovin, Jovin, and y esposo Jake. And then she says, and my husband, Jake. Remember, mm-hmm. Jake is a transgender man. Mm-hmm. Tia, Lolly, Aunt Lolly. This is effing weird. Yeah. You know who also acted like this really weird, possessive? Dee Dee Myers. That mm-hmm. same Lisa person that posted about the militia mm-hmm. trying to get information on the border group that Anthony Aguero was reporting was detaining people by the thousands. Yep. That Dee Dee Myers that had tried to discredit is trying to discredit Anthony now and the and the uh, militia at the border also tried to come here and discredit me, and discredit Duke. She started calling my kids, tell, telling my kids to call her auntie in her drunken stupor while she mm-hmm. was here. These people are creepy. Yep. These Border Support Network people are creepy, and you better be careful because some of them are rapists. Mm-hmm. Some of them are rapists, like Jordan Sheridan and Chelsea Lyons-Kent and Ty Bayless of The Young Turks. They have some rapey, rapey attitudes. And she says, T.O. Adam, that's Adam Elfers. So all of the uh, caravan goers, all of the Central Americans, they just have normal names. They must be the kids. 
Kai Kurimoto is the mom. Jake Lee is the yeah. husband. <laughs> Lolly is the aunt. Mm-hmm. And Adam is also an uncle. <clears throat> What a horrible, scary family. It's like yeah. the Adams family. Exactly. <laughs> Theo Adam. Uh-huh. I do not know how to properly thank you. I love you with all my heart and I'm so proud of you each. And I'm so grateful for all the laughter, the joy and love that we have gotten to experience together. I miss you so much, she says in Spanish. Una, un amor, una familia. One love, one family. <laughs> Vomit. Yep. These people have these sick fantasies uh, that they created families with these people simply because this is so unprofessional. Uh, as uh, and, and you know what? Lolly B supposed to be ha- trained as a social worker. I used to work in casework and I know I used to work with social workers and I know you don't develop relationships like that with people. Okay. Uh, you, you're supposed to be professional. These people are n- unprofessional as hell. And, um, Here's uh, some of those pictures more close up. This one with her sticker on the back of her computer that reads, Lovers Stick Together. <laughs> yeah. You see that? I get the wrong one. Oh, that's correct. We'll wait here for a moment so that you can see the sticker. It's there it is. And... She then goes from just, you know, putting her arm around people to actually, you know, kissing. Here she is kissing a boy. He's got a big grin on his face. I don't know if that's uh, like, he's yeah. kissing me. Yeah, really. Or if it's uh, like, it's a totally okay thing. Mm-hmm. Um, here she is getting kissed on the cheek by a migrant. Did she tell the migrant to get that close to her and kiss her <laughs> on the cheek like that? She seems to really enjoy getting mm-hmm. kissed. But a lot of these people do this poverty porn thing where they take pictures with the migrants, yeah. they do fundraisers for the migrants, and then they do videos talking about their experience talking to the migrants mm-hmm. and how they cried and how it made them really sad. And a lot of these same people did the same thing at Standing Rock. I talked to an Indian and he gave me so much wisdom and That's I'm right. going to buy his book. Uh-huh. And um, here is Ka- Kai Kei Kurimoto and Jake. In another picture, look at how they put their heads up next to his, Mm -hmm. their foreheads touching each of his cheeks as they squeeze in for a tight selfie of love. (laughs) How many of these types of pictures have we seen? Um, Opportunists. That's what they are. Jake, Kai Kurimoto and Jake are part of the migrant group. The migrant group. Uh, that um, they raised funds off of that they're making a band with, with Adam Elfers and called The Bridge. <laughs> You've seen these two uh, twin boys, one of them uh, pictured, both of them wearing uh, baseball caps there. And one of them has a red T-shirt on. The other one's in the black row with the stripe across his chest next to Jake. Mm-hmm. Those are twins. I've seen those twin boys, tw- twin teens in lots and lots of the pictures with the activists. And uh, the the activists that are uh, most closely affiliated with the um, uh, migrants that are even talking, you know, in multiple pictures with them, uh, many times are those that are the accompaniers, the coyotes, the translators of the group, the escorts that help them, that work directly with them, that are among the caravan. And we know who those people are. We've shown you who those people are. But they're not innocent folks. Most of the time, they're also helping in the smuggling operation. Uh, And um, Jake Lee and Lolly B. uh, See, these are the same folks, just so you can see. They were the ones that went in front of the ocean. There's some of the same people. Mm -hmm. And then that's Adam Elfers. And then, of course, there's Lolly B. and Jake Lee with the migrants again. Same folks. The guy that's holding his hand over his face there is the guy that was kissing Kai Kurimoto. Okay. And, you know, like, just they're recycled migrants that they keep hanging out with. They probably got apartments for them so mm-hmm. that they could keep them underground. And if you do the bidding of these uh, people in the caravan, they will keep you rolling in um, uh, dough and apparently, apparently sometimes even drugs. Yep according to the pastor Mm -hmm. at the Agape shelter. 
Well, guess what, Duke? What? Mr. Jake Lee Harris is heading to Africa, to Uganda. What? Here is a post about that, in which that uh, Douglas guy that Alfers was singing with and rapping with mm-hmm. is uh, posting this, saying that Douglas Obedo posted that he wanted to share this very special person he knows that is named Jake Lee. And uh, he said that this guy's taught him a lot, that they're limited com- they have very limited communication because Jake Lee doesn't speak Spanish, but he has been a really sweet guy to him. And then if you scroll down, it says he's going to Africa. He said that, you know, basically they're saying goodbye now because Jake's going to Africa to Uganda. Oh. And and it says to do something like a missionary trip <laughs> and to visit his family as he calls them. So he's not I don't think Jake Lee Harris is from Africa. I don't think so. I, it's just a hunch. <laughs> but <laughs> he's saying as he call this is code. A bunch of these people are going to Africa for some reason. And um, we need to we need to get on that. We need to figure out what that reason is. Okay, Douglas Ovedo has a comment from another one of those activists investigated by Homeland Security that has been one of the driving factors in a lot of these campaigns. It's none other than Doug McLean. Here's his comment. On this t- a post about Mr. Lee going to Africa, and he says, "Love you all from ten thousand miles away, my brothers." Huh. Maybe to make maybe Mr. McLean M- M- can no longer go into Mexico without getting arrested. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, wouldn't doubt it. And Adam Alfers is tagged here with the bridge builders with his family he, as he calls them and one of those people in the photos below is Jamie K- Skapowski uh. Jamie Kapowski or Sep- Sepowski Sepkowski the Antifa the one with Santifa the one that works with Border Sport Network Evan Duke the third one of the people that is admin on the page and definitely Antifa people. There they are, all working together. Make no mistake. Mm-hmm. Here's the tags on that post. You can see Jamie Skipowski working together with the migrants. The same migrants in that group that is uh, with Kei Kurimoto. And you see Jamie Skipowski recently watched my show. She was upset. They all come on the show and say they're going to sue me. Oh, boy. Prepared for a definite, pre- be prepared for a defamation lawsuit, oh, yeah. she said several weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, really. So, so did her other um, kidnapping uh, Border Support Network buddy, River Phoenix. He, he threatened to sue me. Oh, yeah. Haven't heard from him since. Mm-hmm. Um, and guess what, folks? In addition to the answer coalition that we started all of this show off with, there's another group associated with that video with Jesse Jackson's visit and the Jammu Baraka's visit. It's called the Black Alliance for Peace. You can see them both pictured in the video here at the Embassy, uh, Embassy of Venezuela. And it says that the Black Alliance for Peace, Jesse Jackson, are struggling with neo-fascists. There you go. The fascists are out in force. Mm -hmm. The Nazis are there to stop them. And there's uh, Jesse Jackson and uh, Jammu Baraka. Remember, Jammu Baraka and Jill Stein are from the same party as Winona LaDuke Mm -hmm. and Ralph Nader, all of whom have run as candidates for the Green Party. Mm -hmm. And you can see a clip from this video. Oh, we already did it, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did. We did the whole thing. Yep. Okay, so we can just skip that. We don't have to do that again. You already saw that nonsense. Mm-hmm. But uh, you should know that Ajamu Baraka and uh, Jesse Jackson were not the only people that were at Standing Rock 
that um, are in this black or associated with this Black Alliance for Peace, a woman named Yane Indigo is also involved. This is their post, well, a post by Margaret Flowers on April April 4th on Martin Luther King Day where they were saying no to NATO and no war. Tagged in this, you can see, is Ajamu Baraka, Neftra Freeman, Yane Indigo, and Anna Wright. Yane Indigo is the one with the long hair right next, you know, right next to the sign NATO okay. means blah, blah, blah. All right. And what does that sign say, Duke? Read the sign. <clears throat> not one drop. All of the blood. way to the bottom, okay? Okay. Not one drop of one not one drop drop of blood from poor and working class to defend capitalist dictatorship, the Black Alliance for Peace. That's the Black Alliance for Peace, and Yane Indigo is part of it. Remember, Yane Indigo was featured in the stories that we did around the time that they were closing the camps when Mark, when the, the veteran stand for Standing Rock people were all working together. Wes Clark brought in a bunch of PR people, including Maggie Day. Mm-hmm. She was working with Yane Indigo. She was working with Ed Higgins of Activate Now, who was also connected to the Real Progressives. He was also working with Evan Duke. Evan Duke was part of the veterans group that came and did security for Tulsi Gabbard. Same people, all of them working together. They were pictured together at the casino. And BAP, as it's also known, the Black Alliance for Peace, uh, was recently also on April 3rd on the Hill. This is a picture in front of Rayburn, the Capitol. And it says, BAP was on the Hill to deliver our petitions calling on the U.S. to get out of Africa. Why are you sending over uh, Jake Lee Harris? (laughs) <laughs> We're pushing the Congressional Black Caucus and the woman in the long black hair there next to J- Ajama Barak, uh, Ajamu, oh my God, Baraka, Ajamu Baraka is Yane Indigo. Mm-hmm. And here is a profile pic, her profile pic from Facebook so you can see what that looks like. And finally, here is her uh, post about Ajamu Baraka. On Russian television news because Russian television news and Russian people connected to Russian television and uh, Russian reporters, excuse me, Russian television reporters are also connected to Standing Rock reporting. Oh, yeah. Reporting that came out of Standing Rock Mm -hmm. that included the people working with the Nexus group like Kingpin, False Accuser, uh, Christina Hollenbeck. And this is uh, Yane at Standing Rock. She is going to Standing Rock. She posts here saying, heading to Standing Rock. My family here is nervous, but my family there got me. Uh-huh. Mini Wachoni, water is life, no dapple. My luggage was almost bust, was so busted they almost didn't let it on. Must get new travel gear. So many flights. I'm sure yeah. these people travel all over the world. Mostly mm-hmm. on someone else's dime. Someone is paying them yeah. to do this. Keep scrolling all the way to the bottom, please, so all that right. we get the whole post in. And just make sure that there isn't any comment on there. Nope, um, and, of course, as you will recall, she was working very closely to all the Hollywood people, the driving factors, the funding factors, the propaganda factors, like... Desiree Kane. Desiree Kane says in the comments of this post to, to Yane, see you soon. And then someone else says, thank you for going to North Dakota, Yane, and stay safe, Yane. And she says, see you soon, Michelle. And she's talking to Michelle Manos, mm. the girlfriend for Jeremy White. And Desiree Kane. And oh. she's re- replying there to Desiree Kane, who tells her, See you when you get here. Mm-hmm. Of course, as you know, she was working with Maggie Day. And as you also know, she was working with Seven McDonald and Winnie Wong. Here's a post of Seven McDonald's from December 3rd of 2016 when Standing Rock was happening that Michelle Manos, the person that when Yane was tagging in that post with Desiree Kane, is uh, reacting to about taking coats 
to Wesley Clark to go help her friend that she worked with, worked for, who funded her trip there, who pays her, Wesley Clark, to go to be with the 20,000 veterans they brought to Standing Rock. And in the comments, you can see Winnie Wong says, Desiree Kane. Remember, Winnie Wong works for Bernie Sanders' campaign. Mm -hmm. She works with Linda Sarsour. She works with all of these folks. She says Desiree Kane is our organizer. She is on it. We are also obviously working with Tulsi Gabbard. Mm -hmm. Thank you for clearing that up, Winnie. Yep. In case there was any doubt. Thank you for clearing it up. All of these folks were working together. They were the driving factors for people to go to the border. For now, they're the driving factors for people to go to the border to these Texas camps. They're the driving factors for people to join these caravans. They're the driving factors for people to jump in the water, to cross in those kiddie pools, to risk their kids' lives, to risk their own lives, to backlog and try to break our immigration legal system, to overload Border Patrol, to overload shelters, and to make a ton of money on this international smuggling operation. So um, we will be continuing to bring you more information on who some of these folks are the list continues of those that are behind those that are the factors pushing for this continued mass migration emergency we are experiencing in mexico in central america and here in the united states Thank you for being here with your hosts, Cindy Gomez-Shemp. And Duke Gomez-Shemp. You've been listening to A Mexican Crossing Lines here on 88.1 FM, KPPPLP, Fargo-Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Buenas noches. <laughs>